Let us open God's Word at Luke chapter 17, and we start at verse 11. So we will do Luke 17, verse 11 through to 19. Now this morning we also had a reading from Luke. There was earlier in Luke, and that was about Jesus' transfiguration on the mountain. And we said that after that transfiguration, he slowly made his way down south from northwest Galilee down. And now he is going, as our text comes, he's going west of the Jordan and is going through Samaritan territory, through the territory of those hated Samaritans. And he's on his way to Jerusalem. So Luke 17 verse 11. While he was on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten leprous men who stood at a distance met him, and they raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they were going, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice. And he fell on his knees at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But the nine, where are they? Was no one found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. The Greek actually said, Your faith has saved you. And so let us open now God's word. Let's expound it. Congregation of our Lord Jesus Christ, many members of our congregation have had a rough start to this year. Yes, many have had health issues that needed surgery and therapy. And quite a few have had suffered from COVID. I have tried to count, I think, at least eight families were in some or other way affected by COVID. Now, although some are not yet back to full strength, we all have to, in, in a large extent, we all have tasted God's gracious protection and His healing hand to a large extent. Yes, even that young couple in Foxton, about whom I have prayed a few times, whose three-year-old daughter had one whole year in which she had surgery and chemotherapy for tumors on the brain, they too received good news on Tuesday last week. The news that the latest MRI scan shows that the cancer is stable with no new growth seen on the scan images. And so, my brother and sister, I for one feels it's time to thank our God, to praise Him for His goodness, grace, and mercy. And look, is that not what our text is all about? Showing our gratitude, our thankfulness to God for all He has done, for all He is doing, and has promised to still do for all his loved ones. And so our text allows for us the following three points. The first one is healed. The second one, moved. Moved to gratitude. The third one, shame versus blessing. First one then, healed. Our Lord is on his way to Gal from Galilee to Jerusalem. 
from that short-lived glory of the transfiguration on that mountain to the shame and pain of the cross. Which route does he take? Well, there was the popular route which he could take, and that is the route that goes east of the Jordan. That was the slightly longer route. Yes, that was the route which most Jews used to take so that they did not have to go through the land of the Samaritans, people whom they as Jews despised. But Jesus does not despise sinners. After all, he came to save sinners. So what route does he take? Well, he takes precisely the route that goes through the land of that despised people. Look, did he not know? Did he not plan what was going to happen now? That ten lepers who thought that they might find him would actually be found by him. So verse 12 says, And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers. Lepers? Leprosy? What a horrible and merciless disease. You see, in the ancient world, once you were diagnosed with leprosy, you suffered the worst of all possible kinds of isolations that will make COVID isolation blush. Quarantines. Yes, then you had to live in separation, not just for a week or a month, but for the rest of your life. And so you were removed from the community, removed from your dear family, and removed from the synagogue or temple worship. Indeed, if you were a leper, you were a social outcast. And the only fellowship you could then possibly have was with others like yourself. Yes, with other miserable lepers. And here is the beauty that it didn't matter whether you, your fellow leper was a Jew or a Samaritan. When you are afflicted with leprosy, race, nationality cease to be a barrier to fellowship. Yes, even if you were a Jew and your fellow leper was a hated Samaritan, you loved his fellowship, for you are just too happy to have some sort of fellowship, to share thoughts about your illness, and to comfort one another. And so this explains why there was a whole group of lepers coming to Jesus. And let's also remember that leprosy perhaps more than any other illness, was perceived to be because of a specific sin which you have committed. So is it now a wonder that he who came to save from sin was also keen to heal lepers? Well, gauging by verse 12, it's clear these lepers knew the quarantine rules. And that's why they stood at a distance. And because they were at a distance, they had to now raise their voices and, and shout in verse 13, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And here is the question. How did they even know who Jesus was? I mean, they had no newspapers, they had no cameras, they had no pictures, they had no mass communication gadgets like TV or cell phones. Besides, as lepers, their contact with other people, that was next to nothing. Well, the only answer we could think of is that somebody who had seen the miracles performed by Jesus in Galilee must have come as close to them 
as the quarantine rules required. Then this person must have shouted at them, there is a man named Jesus. He's raising people from the dead. He's making the blind see, the deaf hear, and the lame walk. And he makes them leap for joy. Be on the lookout for him. I have seen him coming your way. Here's what he looks like. There's always a group of at least 12 that are following him. And we call him Master. My brother and sister, we don't know exactly how these lepers got to hear of Jesus. But given who he is, uh, who he is and what he had been doing just across the border in Galilee, how could these lepers not have heard of him? Well, the day these lepers had dreamed of, the day they had prayed for, finally became a reality when in the distance, there he was. It is Jesus. You can hear them talk as they talk to one another. You can feel their excitement. Here he comes. He is here. Yes, look over there. That is Jesus. He raises people from the dead. Maybe he can heal us. And so keeping their distance, they shout out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And what does Jesus now do? Well, strangely, he does not do the usual thing. You see, normally Jesus would say, be clean, whereupon the lepers would be instantly clean. But that's not what our Lord does this time. No, instead, he says in verse 14, go and show yourselves to the priests. Of course, in saying, go show yourself to the priest, Jesus is telling these lepers to do what God's law tells lepers to do when they have already been healed. And that is to go to the priest so that the priest can have an authorized diagnosis that they have been cleansed from their leprosy. So what does it mean when Jesus tells these lepers, go and show yourselves to the priests? Well, does it not mean that these ten lepers must trust Jesus, that not instantly, but as they are now walking to the priests, they will get healed? And see, Jesus is testing their faith. Yes, it's much the same as the command God once gave to the leper king Naaman. Do you remember to whom Elisha said, Naaman, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Naaman had to exercise faith because he's not going to be healed the first time. But by God's grace, Naaman finally obeyed. Well, by grace through faith, these ten lepers, without questioning Jesus' words, started walking to the priests. Yes, by God's grace, these lepers knew that they were not on a fool's errand. My brother and sister and, and dear children, just imagine, while these lepers are walking along the road, all of a sudden, their fingers are becoming whole again. Their toes are getting healed. Their lips and their eyelids that, that had been sagging like those big dog's eyes because the muscles and sinews had already been rotting away. They are suddenly becoming firm again. And the horrible sores on their body are vanishing. And one leper would say to another, look at my hand, it's clean. And the other one would say, but, but mine too. It, it is happening. My brother and sister, see, it's like a 
current of electricity which runs through electric wiring. Yes, in the same way, a current of health and vigor is now suddenly running through these ten lepers' bodies. And they were beyond themselves with joy and excitement as their bodies were being cleansed with, with every step that they took on their way to the priests. See, oftentimes, if you and I obey God and we do what we can, then God will not fail to do for us that which we cannot. And regarding the number of lepers that Christ healed in, in one go, I love what Matthew Henry says. How rich Christ is in doing good. Were there not ten cleansed? Here was a cure by, by wholesale. A whole hospital healed with one word speaking. My brother and sister, think with me. If Christ grant physical healing to a whole group in one go, then surely he can also give spiritual cleansing and healing to a whole group in one go. To all his loved ones all over the world. So here is a question. Do you and I realize that when we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord, that very instant we were healed from spiritual leprosy? Our sins were washed away. You were cleansed. You were healed. Do you realize that God now looks at you as somebody who is clean, cleansed from guilt and sin. We come to point two, moved, moved to gratitude. My brother and sister and dear children, just imagine these ten lepers watching one another getting healed. Imagine their joy. Now imagine their eagerness to get to the priest's house. I mean, the sooner the priest could examine each one's whole body and give them the all clear signature and write out that certificate for each one, the sooner they could go home to their families, to their wives and children, to their husbands, to their brothers and sisters. I can see them talking in great excitement and expectation. One guy might have said, it's been three years that I've been away from my family. Another guy could have said, ha, what is three years? I've been in quarantine for the last ten years. Then some others would say, come on, don't talk so much. Hurry up. We can't wait to see our family. And so... The whole lot started running in the direction of the village priest's house. But suddenly, one guy says, Hang on. Wait a minute. Wait. We are clean, aren't we? Yes. But it was Jesus who made us clean. We've got all day to go and see the priests. But first... We have to go back and see him and thank him and honor him. The rest of the lepers said, we don't have time for that. The first one said, but aren't you grateful? Really grateful? How can you not be grateful? My brother and sister, I'm sure that all ten of those guys were grateful. Think about it. They simply had to be grateful. After all, you can't be healed of leprosy like that and not be grateful. So their hearts must have been filled with gratitude. 
but not so filled that they wanted to make a detour and go back to Jesus to go say, thank you, Jesus. So what do we see? Well, don't we see that it's one thing to be grateful, but it's another thing altogether different to go and show it, to manifest it, to do gratitude. Indeed, feeling and doing are not the same thing. But the one guy is making a hard move decision. He's turning back to Jesus. You see, he recognized that it was God who was working through this man, Jesus. Yes, in the Master, this leper recognized God's representative. So this one guy wants Christ to have the glory of this healing before he himself gets the benefit of it. I want to say that again. This one guy wants Christ to have the glory of his healing before he himself gets the benefit of it. And is he not right? I mean, is it not so that if you and I delay our thanksgiving, then time will wear out the sense of mercy, mercy which we have received. Besides, remember how the Apostle Paul describes the two basic sins of all who have rejected God. Says Paul in Romans 1 verse 21, For although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to Him. See the two basic sins? It is not honoring God, and not giving thanks to him. Well, this one guy, one out of ten, is moved. He is moved into thankfulness. So I imagine this is what he told the other nine. Hi, mates, we may never meet again. We spend all this time together in misery. I have enjoyed your company there where we sat in isolation and in misery. But you guys, you can now go ahead. I am first going back to Jesus. So again, children, it's like when you are hungry and so keen to take that first bite from your plate. But mom and dad say, stop, stop, children. We must first thank God for this food. And then... Are you going to be like the nine who didn't thank God? Yes, are you going to say, Ah, oh, mom, can't we first eat and then we thank God later? It's so easy to happen. Well, look how beautiful. Luke tells us in verses 15 and 16, this one guy turned back, praising God, with a little voice? No. Praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Yes, he praised God with a loud voice and in all humility. What an example. You see, this guy expresses his thanks with the same measure of energy as a few minutes before when he also in a loud voice begged for healing. Yes, just as ardently as he prayed for healing, so ardently does he now give thanks to his God granted, for his God granted healing. You say, Pastor, how does this apply to our lives? My brother and sister, when was the last time you and I thanked and praised God from our hearts? See, the moment you and I realize that Jesus washed our sins away is that he cleansed us from spiritual leprosy. 
Look, is that not the moment in which you and I should praise and thank God from our hearts? After all, are we not lepers by our very nature? And has not the God of all mercy and grace through his beloved Son made us clean? If it be that we are in Christ. So are we not to fall at his feet in honor, in adoration, and in worship? Is this not why we are here? We have been made clean, and we have come to give praise, and we have come to give thanks. Well, that is praising God and thanking Him for cleansing us from a spiritual illness. But when was the last time you and I thanked God for the other blessings we have received from Him? Yes, have you and I yet thanked God for His gracious blessings on your and my health? Our successful surgery, our recovery, also from COVID. And when was the last time we thanked Him for our husbands, for our wives? When was the last time we thanked God for our children, for our siblings, for our parents, for mother on Mother's Day, but also for dad? My brother and sister, do you realize that apart from having been cleansed from our spiritual leprosy, the greatest gift that you and I could have here on earth is our relationships? After all, is it not so that our relationships will outlast every other gift we have received here on earth? It will outlast our job, our home, our car, our bank account. So when was the last time you and I praised God for our marriage partner, who apart from forgiveness of our sins is the greatest gift that you and I can receive from God in this life. You see, a husband or wife is not a mere thing that you got from God. No, he or she is a living being, higher in value than your house, car, job, and other living things like plants or animals. He is your husband with a soul. She is your precious wife with a soul. She was someone else's baby once long ago, and so were you. What a costly gift God has given you. So when was the last time we thanked God for him, for her, for our children, for our family, for our church family? We come to the last point, shame versus blessing. I love the way R.C. Sproul has put it. You see, as this one man was still lying on his face before Jesus, Jesus says as much as, Am I having a problem with my math? Did I not just heal ten? Where are they? Where are the other nine? Oh, sir, they're on their way to the priest like you told them. Yes, but you came back to say thank you. You came back to give honor. You came back to praise God. Where are the rest? Were there not any found to give glory to God except this foreigner? My brother and sister, this foreigner was a Samaritan. Jesus calls him a foreigner. So what do we see? Well, don't we see that no sinner is beyond healing? But shame on the other nine. So the question is, because they did not come to say thank you, did Jesus then revoke their cures? 
did Jesus take away their healing? Did he make them sick again? Well, our text does not give any indication that Jesus did that. So despite their ingratitude, their healing remained. But look what happens now shows us that the Samaritan received more than they. Says Jesus to this Samaritan, get up, go your way. Your faith has saved you. Remember how people perceived leprosy as also a cause of sin? Jesus says, your faith has saved you. Wow. Now this poor leper was really clean. Now he was really free to go. Now he could go on his way. He could go see the priest. He can see his wife. He can see his kids. He can see his friends. He can see his rabbi. Because the Lord Jesus Christ cleansed him. My brother and sister, do you and I see it? It is your story. And it is my story. And it is God's story. How do you and I show our thanks to Christ? How do you and I give glory and honor to our Redeemer? That's what we're about. Saying, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let us 